Is everyone ready to start? Um, I'm just going to give it a go because I know I know it's um, it's it's gone too already. Um, and uh, I'm Emma Radcliffe. I'm a GP. I'm a little bit stressed because I couldn't get a train here, which is the irony of talking about the climate emergency <laughs> and not being able to get here on public transport is um, hasn't been lost on me. Anyway, I'm a GP in Tower Hamlets. I've worked in Tower Hamlets for over 20 years. At the moment, one of my um, other new jobs is being one of the primary care net zero leads um, for North East London. So I have no idea about your knowledge, and there are many, many, many more knowledgeable people than me. Um, so I'm just going to throw it out to the floor um, about why you think the climate crisis might be relevant to us in general practice or us as health professionals. If you want to uh, put your hand up, because I think, Lakish, you might need a microphone. Is that right? Yeah? So um, put your hand up and let's, ha let's hear it from the floor or for the people on Zoom. Welcome out there. Any thoughts? I've spent men like the last four years of my life thinking about this, so I can drag on about it. But... Um, yeah. Do, do any any thoughts about why you think we should be doing anything? I think it will have an impact on every aspect of our life. Uh, oh, sorry. sorry. I think um, it'll have an impact on every aspect of our life. Um, from a work perspective, I think we will have to meet there. There'll be legislative and policy. Um, requirements that we'll have to meet. I think we'll get demand from our patients. Um, and at personal level, we'll have demands from, you know, our family, friends, uh, children, who won't change as well. So I think whatever we do, there'll be different demands coming at us from different directions yeah. um, to, to meet the needs of what we need to do in order to make it a better situation in terms of the climate. Yeah. Couldn't agree more. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, would you see an increased number of conditions that you wouldn't have seen in the past from climate change, so for example, respiratory conditions? Ab absolutely, absolutely. And I've got a slide there which shows how health is is affected by it from, you know, you may have, you know, accidents from weather events and that sort of thing, um, and but new diseases. Um, in increases infectious diseases, all sorts of things. Air pollution, which is strongly linked to the climate emergency, um, b because of the burning of fossil fuels. You know, obviously that is absolutely terrible. And bearing in mind, this is about inequalities as well. So, um, yeah, uh, obviously affecting the developing uh, world much more than this country. But it's the, the significant impacts here as well. Anyone? Um. Just, to, just to add on that, obviously it's prevention of disease in a bigger sense, but also bearing in mind that people will see us as role models, so what we do in our profession will, yeah. will be seen as perhaps what the right thing is to do by many people. Yeah. Right. Okay, so you've basically got what I've got here, but I'll flick through what I've got, and I had, I think, four answers here. So there's growing consensus that this is the biggest single threat to health in the world. Um, these are the, that's from the BMJ at the top, when 200 um, editors of health journals said this is going to cause catastrophic harm. There's the Lancet Countdown for Health and there's the WHO comments. And then this is Simon Stevens, who obviously isn't in charge of NHS England anymore, but he is talking about it being the biggest threat in the UK. And this is um, for health of the nation. And this is when he launched the Green Plan. Um, and the, green, the NHS Green Plan, we are the only health service to have a Green Plan. It needs everyone to act on it. And this is the slide that I was talking about, about how you know, all aspect of health is affected by the climate emergency. And this is to remind me to talk about health inequalities. Um, so yes, it will affect the health system, yeah? Pressure, all these illnesses are going to affect us. 
but also bearing in mind that um, the health si the, the GP surgeries, the hospitals also will be affected. I, I think 10% in London or maybe even national, I can't remember, are on uh, floodplains. We can see adverse weather events affecting just um, in August last year, uh, how the, the, the problems that it can cause. And these are going to get more and more and more frequently frequent. But also the NHS is part of the problem. It causes 4% uh, of the, the carbon emissions. Um, and this is how it does it. Uh, this is the UK. Um, but also really positively, so many of the solutions um, are also what we would want as GPs anyway. Um, so um, what can I do about it? This is, this is really what this workshop is about. Um, so I'm just going to briefly mention this because I, cause there are many things. And I think it, what you've said before, I can't remember who said it, is that we, you know, people listen to us as health professionals. So if you're acting personally, you're acting as a role model. This is a very busy slide. I can email it to anyone. I mean, we don't want few people doing a lot of very difficult things. What we want is a lot of people doing some quite easy things, and that is much more impactful. And I'm on my journey from left to right. Politically, um, I've been on more protests than uh, I ca I've lost count of. But, um, and most recently, you know, our voices do count. They listen to us. I've been not quoted, but you know, every time the healthcare professionals write a letter, it gets escalated in the press much more so than uh, uh, than um, other things. And most recently, that was just last week in, uh, in our letter to the Silver Town about the Silver Town Tunnel, which is in East London. But this is greener practice. Um, so, um, what? Do yeah, this is a really, really another really boring NHS slide about where the problems lie. So let's uh, liven it up a bit, and um, you can tell me uh, what you think are the most impactful or the least impactful in terms of um, carbon emissions. At the top there, that's a litre of, you can't read it, is uh, anaesthetic gas called desflurane. Is there anything else that you, this is actually a salamol inhaler, I think, which is um, salbutamol. So opening it up to the floor, what do you, what does anyone think? You know, let me know what you might you think you're probably going to be surprised about, or what you think is that what what does anyone think is the least got the lowest carbon emissions here? Anyone? Anyone on Zoom? Wow. Well, um, most bananas, I think, are shipped, actually. There's a brilliant book called How Bad Are Bananas. It's absolutely fantastic. And actually, bananas are... You, everyone thinks that they're flown and they're quite bad, but actually they're quite low. And actually, it's number two on the list here. So, yeah. I know that jeans have been picked 750 litres of water. Oh, wow. Have you read the book? Well, uh, I put it in a quiz. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> OK, it, it's, about, it's about midway down. Anyone else have any thoughts? Email, you've got it. It's the lowest, yeah? So that is really why we should be doing all our referrals electronically. Um, and, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, gi I'll give you the answers in a minute and you can have a, have a look. Anyone else uh, think, what's the worst? What's the worst here? It is the absolute worst. It is worse. Yeah, one liter of desflurane is much more impactful than a, um, one cataract surgery operation. So there's a massive push to get rid of them in the hospitals. Um, yeah, sure, I'll just show you what I think. What what the answers are? Um, where's the inhaler? This is a salamol inhaler. Yeah. Okay. Um, going to move on to inhalers a little in a little bit so this I think is probably the primary care focus at the moment yeah um, any questions on that 
bearing in mind I am not a carbon footprinting specialist. If anyone hasn't done their own carbon footprint, I think the WWF have a great one. I think uh, most people in the developing world have a carbon footprint of less than five tonnes of carbon. Most people in this country have 13 tonnes. Um, mine, after a lot of work, is about nine, I think. But um, it's worth giving it a go, personal, annual. So moving to primary care, um, uh, this, is, this is where the issues are. So, you know, in order to try and work out where you're going to, where you're going to focus on, I think, you know, this is where the problems are. Um, so really significantly, the, um, it's, it's medicines that are the massive, massive issues in primary care, yeah? So... Um, when you're thinking about where you're going to work to, to work on, um, yeah. And here you go. Here's a bit of medicines. Obviously, there's huge other impacts around medicines, around packaging, around how they're made, how they're transported, and um, how they're disposed of, which would contribute to, to the carbon footprint. But as clinicians, this is something to think about. So um, if, if you're uh, t um, talking about patient demands and that sort of thing, then this is something to think about. Not many patients, I think, are asking at the moment about uh, an environmentally friendly inhaler, and certainly there's a great deal of backlash around blaming asthmatics and all of that. Um, uh, but So this is a um, Ventolin inhaler, yeah? If you cut it and change it to salamol, you halve the carbon footprint, yeah? So that's still a metre dosed in, in, inhaler like that. If you cut it, if you change it to a DPI, a, um, what are they called? Uh, dry powder thank you. <laughs> uh, then all dry powder in, inhalers are much, much, much more environmentally friendly. And there's a, there's a great... Um, uh, website called uh, Greener Inhaler. While we're on inhalers and we're on primary care, there's a massive focus uh, in, if I'm sp in the Investment and Impact Fund this year on um, inhalers and trying to change them. I think um, within Greener Practice, which, is, uh, which I'll come to in a bit, there, there's a push against it. Um, well, we want to change inhalers, but it's called high quality, low carbon care because actually the worst thing for an asthmatic in terms of carbon footprint is ending up in hospital. Yeah. And there's many simple things you could do in terms of reducing, you know, so the better controlled asthmatics, no matter what inhalers they're on, are more the most environmentally friendly asthmatics. Very, very simple other things could do, like uh, if you're taking two puffs of an inhaler, you could increase the dose to, so it's, you know, 100 to 200. So it's one puff twice a day because that's um, re reducing, um, reducing the amount of um, uh, gases that are going into the air with, the, with their carbon footprint. Yes, yeah, yeah. Yes, again, I'm no expert here, but I think, you know, the equivalent gases are measured in what they would be in terms of carbon, um, carbon dioxide and that sort of thing. So methane, I think, is... Gosh, I'm so bad at remembering figures, but it's many, many, many more times, but it, it, it's, it, you can measure it as a carbon footprint, if you see what I mean, yeah. Um, uh, yes, yeah, so carbon dioxide... There, there. This, this is my practice, uh, carbon non-clinical carbon footprint. So the point is here, is that you, you know, this is. So I'm trying to. What I'm trying to say is, this is where the problem is. So, in order to work out how we're going to act, we are, we are, um, we've got to know where the problem is. So in my practice, energy, it could be double that. But at the moment, they're only counting energy because we're only using gas because the other provider is a green provider, so they've halved that. 
the biggest problem is travel and actually because I work in East London it's staff travel because I think they're assuming that most of our patients would walk. Um, procurement are sort of physical things we buy and business services are services that we buy in um, like uh, HR or accountancy and, th and, and, th and things like that. So I've put my own practices figures and this is what we've come up with. Um, so um, I don't know whether, it's let's open it up at to, to the floor and think about where we should be focusing in, uh, in uh, so this is really the nub of what I wanted to discuss today. Um, and, and really um, have your thoughts about where we should be focusing. I think something that com has come up a lot on the wards particularly is PPE and like disposable aprons mm. um, that are being thrown away after every patient and a new set of gloves after every patient. Mm. I suppose it's sort of the balance of if we're wearing scrubs and not wearing them at home, is that necessarily needed, but also the keeping the patient safe and ourselves safe as well? Mm, mm. Yes, well, I'm just going to raid here. Here is a type 2R environmentally um, uh, surgical face mask, um, uh, which uh, we've been using in our practice um, uh, and have been trialled in other... Um, in, in, in hospitals, I know at Bart's Health, in the non-clinical settings, and they're used in, in other places. I mean, it, 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 it's, a, it, it's, a, it's a big issue. I think the problem here is about bringing people on board and realising that this affects absolutely every aspect. So infection control have a very narrow um, perspective, I think. You know, their job is to absolutely prioritise infection control. It's not to minimise waste, yeah? And I think this is what we've sort of come up with, the barrier. If you make it everyone's job to think about waste, bit, well, to think about every aspect, you know, what, and ask the question every time, is what effect is this having on the climate? What is the carbon footprint of what I'm doing? So I absolutely ag ag agree with you, yeah. Anyone else got any thoughts based on you know where what we call the hot spots are in uh, primary care? This is this is uh, you know you, or you can ask me as well because I really wanted your thoughts. Anyone on Zoom got anything to ask or say? No. Uh, I think like the packaging as well. So mm. um, like cannulas. I suppose this is more hospitals, but like cannulas and catheters. Mm. Um, it all comes in plastic and there's no recycling bin, you just whack it all in the clinical bin and I think that all gets yeah. either burnt or buried. So yeah. if they could up recycling, that would be good. It is. I mean, what's really interesting is that we, is that whenever we talk about these forms is that everyone does think about waste immediately and recycling, but I don't think it is the biggest carbon footprint. Uh, I'm not sure whether it's here or not. Uh, is it on there? You know, so, yeah, yeah, um, but you know, every, what we want is everyone to be doing everything the right thing, and you know, so it's really important to know that the, that there's various levels of incineration. In general practice, I'm chucking everything in an orange or yellow bag. It should be a tiger bag, as people seen those. Yeah, yeah. So, so in general practice, there should only really be one sort of bin for infected stuff. And then the rest should be in the tiger. Most should be in the tiger. So the ear speculums, uh, or maybe we could find a solution to that. M uh, most like speculums and that sort of thing should be in the tiger bag. And then obviously you should have recycling. And, you know, this is a an area of sort of where the system really needs to come to our aid in terms of educating us and providing very clear resources and the, the bins. But the, the yellow bags or the orange bags, they are burnt at a very, very, very high temperature because it's for infective wa infected waste, proven infection. And that has a much higher carbon footprint than it does the tiger bags. 
So this is probably more of a question than a comment. Mm. Um, yeah, please. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, with kind of medications, so yeah. a lot of medications are put on repeat. Um, I don't know how much of them actually get used, so compliancy with patients, things like that. I don't know if that's something we can improve on and whether that is contributing a lot or significantly to that carbon footprint. I think in the hospital we do the discharge summaries. We kind of make sure that they will be going home with the right medications that they are on repeats with. However, in primary care, a lot of repeat medications perhaps patients don't take as regularly as prescribed. I think you've you've gone to what a lot of us have been thinking about it to the absolute core is that over over prescribing and uh, waste is really right up there in in terms of what we can do in in primary care. So um, uh, so do it looking at the people who are on ten medicines and more and thinking do they really need. To, to be on those is really, really, really what we should be doing. I'm part of, uh, so I'm coming to Greener Practice, but Greener Practice is a national organisation, um, which you're all incredibly welcome to join. Um, it, it's for uh, it's for anyone working or interested in, in primary care. They've it's a very small group of about five GPs in Sheffield, which has now got groups all over the country, supported by whichever faculty Sheffield, uh, um, uh, I can't remember its name, but but they were they were funding it and funding its um, website and things. So you know they are that the faculty needs some real credit there. Um, so f so a few couple of GPs and now there's greener practice groups all over the country. Um, London has just been split into uh, North and South. I'm part of North. You're all really, really welcome to join. It's incredibly formal. This is a movement rather than an organisation. There is no real funding for all of us, but um, you know we're all very, very supportive of each other. Um, uh, because we all just believe that this is the right thing to be doing. Anyway, I've gone on for a massive tangent here, but um, but yeah. So over prescribed. So I'm one of the leads on a WhatsApp group which is looking at clinical care. But there was also respiratory, and everyone is focusing on respiratory because of you can see that terrible thing there. But no one is mentioning over prescribing. But it was thought that I would be overwhelmed by work trying to sort out this WhatsApp group and you know get all the documents. I mean, there's a lot of work being done on overprescribing in general practice anyway, and we probably just need to tap into that. Um, but um, yeah, I think, yes. But prevention as well, prevention. The thing is, is that money is not in deprescribing, is it? You know, all the clinical trials and everything else will be promoting new medicines and, you know, but we know as clinicians that then this isn't the answer that we really that it's totally linked with lifestyle you know um, that the aren't these are the answers to many of our patients problems and preventing them getting it in getting all these problems in the first place sorry now I've got I've, I've but this is this is you know this is the, this is I just want you to to carry on with your ideas or your questions really um, uh, about how we are going to green general practice. So it's using this and uh, my practices, uh, knowing that um, and knowing where, um, where where the issues are. Any any other thoughts about how we might? I spend I've spent most of the last week in meetings discussing this. So I've clearly got loads of thoughts. But yeah, 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 absolutely, yeah, all, all clinical, yeah, yeah, um, yes, I think there's quite a bit of work to measure the carbon footprint, the, the reduction, so. I think the way petrol prices are going up, people will be asking for it. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. If yeah. not for childcare, they'll be asking for the petrol prices. Yeah, 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 yes, yeah, uh, yes, I think, so I 
the, the greener practice forums before the pandemic were like, this is probably an answer here. Uh, um, my practice was doing having some people work from home uh, for some time before, not necessarily because of that reason, uh, but it, um, anyway, yeah. In terms of things like, you know, if you want to drive the change you want to see, yeah. Um, I always think things like you know, procurement. Yes. You can make it, you can make it count. Yeah. But is is it difficult to ensure you're procuring from organisations? which have a better carbon footprint and how how does it work in terms of cost it's like an electric car you know, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. a difficult change to make mm. well you know I think in hospital it's much easier because you've got you've got people who are responsible for it in the trust and if the all every trust had to produce a green plan by the 31st of January this year um, and they have and procurement was obviously a big part of it and I spent the week with meetings with procurement managers from the North East London Trust and they they are looking at it the problem is general practice isn't it that you, you know um, is that we're all small businesses so and we don't know quite I, I think there's a re responsibility for slightly larger businesses that you have to put 10 20% weighting or something on social value or something of which um, working on sustainability would be part of it but there's no there's no there's no such restrictions on general practice so I don't know what the answer is you know um, really I mean working I'm working in North East London to try and maybe pull together some resources like maybe we could come up with these are green companies and these are good companies that you can buy your speculums from ideally you should be throwing them away you know we've got so much work to do in terms of should we shouldn't be chucking speculums in the bin you know or, or incinerating them or doing anything with them you know they sh we should probably be going back to sterilizing and that sort of thing um, again infection control have slightly won the argument there um, which we need to push back on I think um, yes so we're at the really beginning of the journey um, in that I mean I think you could ask questions of, of things you are procuring yeah um. it's often a it's often a multi-strand of journey isn't it mm. Yes. Yes. So we've got yet another reason for about to not over -pre prescribe and that you know anyway. It, you, it's it's really difficult. I think trying to look at things that might influence change. Um, so I'm personally going to really ask my practice and my PCN. Uh, everyone knows that it's a primary care network which is you know probably about 50,000 patients groups of maybe five or so practices four or five um, that sort of thing that, um, they ask them to act on asthma at the moment because greener practice will have are about to land a fantastic resource on the 1st of April which has been a little bit funded by the Health Foundation but more by blood sweat and tears by people who really care about this um, but it has been approved by NHS England about high high quality low low carbon um, asthma care so that's about to come in in order to help with the investment and impact fund uh, support that change which is a little bit about switching inhalers it's also in quaff it's also in our local incentive scheme are uh, and it's also in our medicines optimization scheme so there's multiple reasons that th this particular point in general practice particularly in our area to focus on asthma I think probably and nationally as well 
So um, that's what you know. That's an easy hit, I think, where you might rather than oh my goodness, where am I going to buy my speculums from? You know, because that needs a bit of work. You know, or yeah. So we're going for things that could go fast, and we've got to do anyway. Yeah. So we've got to review these asthmatics. We've got to give them plans. Asthma in the UK is absolutely appallingly managed, and this is another reason to really focus on it. So, yes. Um, just a comment from Jude who online, and she says whole food options in dietary advice, avoiding overprocessed and overpackaged alternatives. So, so diets, yeah, yeah, yeah. okay, um, yes. So in these green plans, um, it, their diet and nutrition have come up again, again, and we're and um, and uh, the hospitals have really, really focused on that, and I really hope they do some some good stuff. But uh, yeah. I mean, really anxious about advising any particular diet because it gets us into hot water every time. But um, a healthy diet, one with probably less meat, yet yeah, less dairy, much, much, much more fruit and vegetables is healthy for the patient and healthy for, 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 for the planet. So, yeah. So I didn't quite get all of that, the kids, but I hope that's this. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, I know this is more of a smaller area, and it wasn't like the here. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, in terms of like the paper and the save the tree aspect of things, um, I was just thinking like with uh, letters like referral letters or hostel letters that come through the post. I'm just thinking like a lot of the time they get lost, so people don't really see them, yeah. and then they miss appointments, and then that's another thing to mm. have to go back into the system yeah. again. And I was thinking, I know obviously technology, like it depends on like age groups and things like that as well. But I think there are some other sources of communication, like if, if preferences could be made for like, do you prefer to be contacted by email or do you prefer to contact via text? Do you prefer to contact it by telephone? I think just involving that more because I've had problems where many people said, oh, we've missed this appointment, we don't know about it. And that's just like another paper uh, communication yeah. aspect of things that might be. Completely yeah. agree. Yes, yeah, so it may not be the the biggest, and I think it is important to keep the where the biggest areas are in mind. But these are easy, easy actions. So I think no practice should be buying virgin paper, yeah, and no hospital trust for you. There's no reason to do that. Um, and I hope the RCGP is not uh, buying smart paper as well. Um, yeah, there's so so that's really simple action. To, to, to do and no please plastic envelope you know the, the thing um, but I completely agree and you know probably we're going that way anyway do you think with the NHS app and you know it's been used a lot with Covid and stuff uh, yeah so yes I think trusts are moving that way we've massively moved that way as a practice uh, I don't know what your experience is you know text 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 we didn't send any paper flu invites out this year it's all texts and phone calls so yeah. I might just be aware because I'm in Wales I don't know if this system might be a little bit different there but yeah some of the places it's, it's still a lot of paper on the I think even, even yeah. in England I mean uh, hospital sends us at least a bunch of 30-40 mm. letters every yeah. day and we have got to start opening them <laughs> yes. one hour for, for opening the letters do you think it's changed a bit uh, in the last it couple has of years? Yeah, a little mm, bit, mm. but it's not gone completely. It needs to, like the fax machines, yes, were stopped because of the GDPR. Yes, chucked. Yes, that's what needs to happen with the letters. If yeah. they arrive, nobody yeah, will check yeah, them. Yeah, you need yeah, to yeah. send them electronically. Yeah. I'd other other yeah. thing mm. which has started mm. is consultants have been asked to write to the patient and mm. write to the GP. Yeah, mm. yes, yeah, yeah. So which doubled. Which is great, but that means two different letters. Yes, yes. And, and I don't know if there is a need of two different letters. Uh, no. Well, hopefully it will go electronically <laughs> soon. I don't know when, but uh, anyway. GDPR and all of that is opening up a whole different uh, kettle of set ac patient access to notes. I'm not going there, but uh, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> uh, anyone else got... Uh, uh, some other thoughts about what we could do because all of these things we can do to some degree and if everyone did something from today then I feel like um, I'll have done uh, done my job just one thing um, uh, hey, 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 but how are we doing for time Vicky? Yes, 
couple of minutes. Okay. Um, so, yeah, yes. Yeah, so you about to? Sorry, this is just another. Qu this is a question mm. more in a sense. Um, I'm just thinking, like, in terms of, I think complacency is one of the big issues when it comes to like issues like this. And I think, how do we actually? encourage people to think differently about and to actually increase the recognition because that's this has been a ma massive issue for years people yeah. know about it but we all get complacent like we don't want to do anything because it's a matter of convenience so what is it that's going to drive the, yeah. the thought process and how can we actually set that example as clinicians yeah. in that sense? so there's a great quote which is the greatest threat to the planet is thinking that someone else is going to solve it and I really, really believe that, and I cannot believe that, that Greener Practice is this tiny five Sheffield GPs has just exploded. You know, they are, you know, it is, it is amazing that the appetite is there, but really the system should have sorted it out a lot long. If you think of how long the COP process is and this and the other, the NHS should have been. Uh, it's world leading with its NHS plan, but it should have happened a long, 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 long time ago. And we, I mean, I could go on this about, it's all about money really, isn't it? But um, there is no, there's not a lot of profit in this. Um, so, um, but the medical schools are, are adding uh, it uh, to, 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 to their, their curriculums, which is great. Um, uh, the RCGP have got toolkits and have supported um, stuff and I'm one of the North East London faculty climate scholars and there's more and more and more and hopefully these things will be exponential. Um, We're a very individual mm. also advocates. Mm. So we can all individually do something. You know, you won't change the world immediately by actually engaging more people. I think mm. you're going to change things. Mm. 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 And it's often collective. It's collective desires as a population that changes things, isn't it? Yeah. Really, we have a lot more power connectivity than we actually think. And it is switching. You know, if you look at the number of articles in the newspapers and in the medical journals around climate change, it is going up exponentially, you know, everything needs to happen so much faster, but, you know, we, it is so important that everybody comes on, on, on the journey and everyone is engaged and buying into it, really, yeah. Um, so I'm just going to talk about resources. I've obviously talked about Greener Practice a bit. If you want to join any, uh, any of the groups, I can take your details um, at um, and that I will can direct you in various um, ways around that. Um, there is um, this, this, this is another success. Um, this is going to be a LES, a locally enhanced service in uh, Cheshire. Yeah. So Greener Practice is getting out there, and they've created this. You know, with some great, great um, s suggestions. Um, the Green Impact for Health Toolkit, have I got it on here? Yes, here, was supported by the RCGP, not anymore, uh, but, uh, was, but was set up by its one of the ex-presidents, Terry Kemple, and it, it's for general practice, and you can look at all these areas, and they have awards for gold, um, gold, silver, and bronze. We got bronze a couple of years ago in our practice. It's quite hard work, but you know, if you want ideas, these are resources out there. Um, it's the National Union of Stu Students because I think they put it together for various sorts of um, businesses. I think, it, it, and not, and this is this one is specifically for 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 for, for, for general practice. Yeah. Um, so, um, and this is n this is what we've done in Tower Hamlets. Uh, and this is me trying to say we've just got to win everyone's hearts and minds, you know, here. That, you know, 
there are, there are ways in which we can influence change. We can influence change with money, with legislation and everything else, but nothing is going to change until everyone believes that this is the right thing to be doing. Two minutes, okay, right. So um, if I leave, can I, can I take away from uh, anyone who wants to speak or on Zoom, um, just one action that you, that, I, that you, might, you might already be taking? Uh, because I'm hopeful the message is already there, uh, or, or that you might take away and go and act on now. Any, anyone? Do you, do you want to? Do you want to? I would just say no letters to patients unless they are really, really needed. So yes, brilliant. Yeah. Do you be concerned to send a letter? Yes. Yeah. 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 That's a you know a brilliant you know thing. Yeah. Any. Anything, anyone, anyone else going to do anything from this, uh, from having attended? I mean, yes, yes well, yeah. um, again, we're just describing this uh, situation that we are only prescribing what's needed for the patient mm. um, and what's not needed, and mm. we can use as soon as we can. Mm. And sometimes that might require a bit more discussion with other doctors but just to go out of our way to do that a bit more yeah okay do you want to you you were nodding yes yeah um, I've got my GP placement coming up this year so I think what I'll do is just talk to them about it and see if they calculated their practice carbon footprint and see what they're doing because it's not really something that I've thought about before this so thank you okay. no. <laughs> brilliant thank you I'm not sure if you're If you can tell me anything. Uh, I, I think that, um, you know, I, I am going to be more mindful about where I spend my pound. And people want my pound, but I will uh, make them want it by doing things that I want done. Brilliant. That is, uh, this uh, excellent. Professionally or personally? Both. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that, that's, that's a brilliant outcome. Has, uh, um, Right, is that, uh, that's it, yeah, okay, right, well, thank you. I really hope that that's brought some ideas to you. If you need any resources, you can always contact me. There's Greener Practice, there's thousands and thousands of things. You can come, go to that website and, f and find more. But um, thanks very much for, for, for coming to, to into this workshop today. Thank you. Thank you.